Welcome back everyone, it is me Matimus, I hope you're having an outstanding day and thank you for joining me on this video. We are discussing Russian aviation and what a badass plane we're looking at today. The Su-24 Tactical Bomber Sweep Wing, absolutely incredible piece of Russian hardware. And I want to talk a little bit about today its overview and a little bit about what it's come to be and what it's come from. Now the Su-24 is an aircraft that's always kind of inspired me from the video game era of F-22 Lightning II, which was made by Nova Logic. And I was always shooting these things out the sky in the video game in the F-22 Raptor. But let's be honest, uh, we've seen this aircraft beyond just video games in the media, whether it be, you know, scooting past the USS Donald Cook or uh, being operating in Syria and other war zones around the world. Um, it is a very prevalent aircraft and, you know, a lot of people see the MiG-29, the Su-27, the F-22, you know, all the sort of common aircraft we see around the modern military age, both Western and Eastern. But the Su-24 is kind of one of those aircraft that really doesn't get that huge spotlight. It's similar to what I would say is the Tornado of the British Air Force, which is, uh, well, let's be honest, the Royal Air Force Tornado is just as uh, iconic as this one is in the Russian Air Force. Now, this was developed in the Soviet Union in the 1960s. The Su-24 tactical bomber has become one of the most successful aircraft in its class for its day, featuring delta wings and auxiliary lift engines meant to improve its field performance. The first prototype turned out to be more a liability, though, than an asset, and the aircraft was redesigned to have variable geometry wings. The Su-24 had a baptism of fire in Afghanistan, and was exported to Iran, Iraq, Algeria, Libya, Syria, seeing action in many of these countries. Back at home, however, the Russian Air Force Su-24s were heavily involved in the first and second Chechen campaigns, and the aircraft had undergone a massive midlife upgrade, allowing it to carry precision guided munitions, which is still going strong to this day. The Sukhoi Su-24 Fencer, as known from its NATO designation, is a Russian tactical bomber aircraft primarily. It is capable of delivering nuclear and conventional weapons in all weather conditions day and night. The aircraft is powered by two powerful AL-21F turbojets combined with a variable geometry wing and terrain avoidance system or TFR which enables the Su-24 to fly very low level at supersonic speeds. The variable geometry wing has the following settings, 16 degrees takeoff and landing, 35 degrees cruise, 45 degrees is high speed maneuvering and 60 degrees is supersonic flight. Its crew consists of a pilot and a navigator weapon station officer, which are seated side by side in the cockpit, which is not the same sort of configuration that you would expect from Western aircraft such as the Tornado. Apart from the nav attack system and the radar, the TFR is in the nose and also contains a secondary radar scanner for ranging airborne targets also. Early production variants of the Su-24 were limited to a weapon load of only 7,000 kilograms with six hardpoints. But design changes during production soon introduced two additional underwing pylons and another one on the centerline fuselage. Now with a total of nine hardpoints, the Su-24 is able to carry up to 8,000 kilograms or 17,637 pounds. The two R-60 AAMs can be carried for self-defense also. The most important bomber variant of the Su-24 was the Su-24M. Also known as the Fencer D by NATO designation, this upgraded Su-24 is equipped with more advanced systems. It features an advanced nav attack targeting system, which combined with the Kara 24 laser rangefinder and designator, enables it to use laser guided and TV guided weapons. Navigation and radio communications were also upgraded. The addition of an in-flight refueling system greatly improved the aircraft's range and flexibility, and one of the key aspects of this aircraft was it being able to stay on station for so long, being able to refuel its own brethren. The Su-24MR is a dedicated tactical reconnaissance version of the Su-24M. All weapon systems were removed to make space for the reconnaissance equipment. The Su-24MR is equipped with a complex system of sensors and cameras, has a radar tracking equipment, infrared and television cameras, panoramic and perspective photo cameras, but also laser and radar detection systems, which allow the system to not only protect itself, but find other systems that are tracking other targets. The systems can be operated both manually and automatically, allowing the pilot to be somewhat autonomous in his operation, with his co-pilot operating the weapon systems. The Su-24MP is another variant based on the Su-24M upgrade. The Su-24MP is an electronic warfare platform, the jamming equipment is situated in a container on the center line below the fuselage. Just like its sibling, the Su-24MR, it has lost its air-to-ground capability, 
but it can be equipped with two or four R60 infrared guided missiles for self-defense. The SU-24MK is an export variant of the SU-24M, which was developed for friendly Arabian nations. There are almost no differences between the SU-24MK and the original SU-24M. Reportedly, 20 aircraft were exported to Syria and 15 to Libya, with 24 to Iraq. During the 1990, Russia delivered 12 SU-24MK fences to the Islamic Republic of the Iranian Air Force. The IRAF has modified these aircraft to use weapons such as the C-802 NOR anti-ship cruise missile. After Operation Desert Storm began, 24 Iraqi SU-24MKs fled to Iran. These have since been integrated to use the SU-24 fleet modifications that have been modified for most Russian aircraft too. In 2002, all Iranian SU-24s were modified with their in-flight refueling probes to receive fuel from the IRAF KC-707 tankers. SU-24M2 is an upgrade of the baseline SU-24M, which is modelled by Russia's Gefest company. The SU-24M2 is equipped with a new advanced SVP-24 computer plus the latest software to accompany it, which improves navigational accuracy and non-guided weapon delivery precision. The 4th Combat and Conversion Training Center, based at Libestik, has been running the operational evaluation program for the new program for quite some time. At least five Russian Air Force aircraft have been upgraded to the Su-24M2 standard, and reportedly seven of the Su-24MK aircraft were delivered to Algeria, which have also been upgraded. The Su-24 Frontline Bomber was developed to replace the Yak-28 in the tactical, bomber, reconnaissance and electronic warfare roles. The Su-24 entered frontal aviation service in 1973 and with the group of Soviet forces in Germany in 1979. The aircraft is very renowned for its fast and stable low-level capabilities and can carry a very impressive warloads, albeit at the expense of the appreciable reduction in range of this aircraft due to it being so heavy. Unfortunately, early versions of this aircraft were hampered by very poor quality, unreliable avionics and the shortcomings were addressed with the Su-24M Fencer D. Effectively, a second generation fencer featured the new Orion forward looking radar, an infrared probe, and the new PNS 24M navigation attack system. The Kara laser rangefinder and targeting designator gave the capability with a new range of precision guided missiles, which were very, very good at being able to engage from standoff distance for this aircraft, reducing its need to go into an environment where air to air or ground to air missiles could be engaging this aircraft. Some interesting facts about this plane. Although NATO applies the codename Fencer to the aircraft, Soviet crews quickly nicknamed it Chomodin, or Suitcase, for its versatility in weaponry. Its deployment in East Germany in 1979 and the apparent capabilities of the aircraft aroused the concern of NATO intelligence services very quickly. Part of this initial fear was the West was based on the assumption that the Sukhoi used turbofan engines that would provide greater attack range. Currently, Russia operates around 577 of these aircraft, with 447 serving with the Russian Air Force and 130 with the Russian Navy. On April 10th, 2014, Su-24 planes buzzed the new American destroyer USS Donald Cook in the edge of the Black Sea, flying past several times at quite close range. Now, I can't comment specifically on this instance, but it is some interesting footage if you wish to go check it out on YouTube. The existing models of the Su-24 and Su-24MK are going through a program of improvement of extension of life, including GPS, multifunctional displays, digital map generators, and the latest weapons such as the R-73, AA-111 Archer air-to-air -air missiles, and the updated version is designated the Su-24M2, and potentially even going into the M3 package, which they are trying to update with even more advanced radar technology. In December 2014, the British Ministry of Defence reviewed plans for the defence of the Falkland Islands following British media reports that Russia had actually offered to lease Argentina 12 Sukhoi 24s in return for food such as beef and wheat. British daily tabloid The Sun reported that this is part of an alleged Argentinian plan to recover the islands with Russian support. The Argentinian government responded that it had never considered the possibility of leasing the Russian aircraft. Of course, the key to this aircraft is its air-to-surface missiles, and the Su-24 is armed with the following types. The KH-23 or KH-23M, NATO codename AS-7 Kerry, is a radio command guided missile with a range of up to 5 kilometers, and it can carry up to 4 of them. The KH-28 or AS-9 Kyle and the KH-58 passive radar homing missiles have a range of up to 90 kilometers, and two of these missiles can carry. 
Up to two Weimpel R60 A88 aphids or IR homing air to air missiles with a range of 3 kilometers can also be carried. The Su 24M aircraft is armed with a KH 25L AS 10 Karen laser guided missiles with a range of up to 20 kilometers, and four of them can be carried. The KH 29LT AS 14 Kedge laser TV guided missile, a range of up to 10 kilometers, and three of them can be carried. The KH 31P or AS 17 Krypton passive radar homing missiles of a range of up to 180 kilometers, and two of them can be carried. The KH-59 AS-13 Kingbolt TV command guided missiles, range of up to 90 kilometers, and two of them can be carried. It is also armed with a CAB-50 OKR TV guided and CAB-1500 L laser guided air bombs supplied by the Region State Research and Production Enterprise of Moscow. Both aircraft can carry up to six rocket pods. The weight of a conventional bomb armament as well amounts to around about 7.5 tons. The aircraft can carry up to three gun pods also with the 23mm GSH-623 guns, which have a rate of around 9,000 rounds per minute and a fire rate of 500 rounds. The GSH-623 guns are manufactured by Instrument Design Bureau of Tula, Russia. Of course, with something so big and something so powerful with firepower, it needs a lot more power to get it up in the sky. This thing is a fat pig and requires a lot of power to get it moving. The power plant comprises of two AF turbojets with a thrust of 11,200 kg thrust each. Fuel is accommodated in the fuselage integral tanks. Two external fuel tanks with a capacity of 3,000 litres each can be suspended from the centre wing section with one external fuel tank with a capacity of 2,000 litres suspended from the fuselage. An inert gas system is installed for fire safety, and the Su-24M aircraft is equipped with a flight refueling system. The Su-24M has a maximum speed of 1,550 km an hour and a range of over 3,000 km. The service ceiling is 11,000 meters, and the maximum rate of climb is 9,000 meters a minute. These engines are powerful and they're pushing her hard, but you have to remember that to how much she's carrying and how much she weighs. Compared to the Tornado, she is almost a third more in terms of weight compared to her Western counterparts. But for a technical standpoint of its future, the Su-24 is a design that met its last fruitful day sometime yesterday. Her 1960s origin almost dictates such action, but financial limitations and modernization programs within the Russian Federation have kept the fence irrelevant in the last decade. However, to the west, the F-11 Aardvark has already been retired from service of the United States Air Force, and the Su-24 could hardly be considered a contender to the more stealthy battlefields that we have today. The Su-24 is scheduled to be replaced in the long run, however, at least with the Russian Air Force, by the Sukhoi Su-34 fullback two-seat twin-engine fixed fighter wing bomber. The aircraft fulfills a similar role, but sports a bevy of modern and advanced features that makes the Su-24 quite archaic in its nature. For the interim, the Su-24M and Su-24MK production models are being given quite considerable modernization assessments to keep them viable, and are still capable of doing what they need to do today. The updates will include incorporation of an all-glass cockpit, including a featured heads-up display, multifunctional displays, and the compatibility with the A-11 Archer short-range air-to-air missile continued to be upgraded. There will also be a digital moving map display and helmet-mounted sights for pilots, this currently is trying to be pushed against all modern fighter jets out there in the world, and as you can see, the Russians are trying to catch up with some of its legacy platforms too. All in all, this aircraft still to this day does have viability on the modern air battlefield. However, it does have some problems with it being quite old in terms of its upgrade capability. You can only change the infrastructure of an aircraft so much compared to its airframe, and of course the Su-24 has been around for quite some time. However, it's still producing its missions today and is still able to push a lot of ammunition downrange when needed to. I must say I have a lot of fascination with the aircraft. I think it is a really cool legacy Russian aircraft that has a staple Soviet bomber design. Long, thick nose, massive engines, lots of weight, huge amount of armament carried on side of it. And of course those two crazy pilots next to one another that just chilling out, doing mid-air refueling and all the good stuff. That is really cool. It always reminds me of, you know, the uh, 
sort of space age, really. And, you know, when you look at these aircraft, they almost look like they need to be in space, uh, almost like rocket ships with that huge nose on the front of them. Really impressive aircraft, and I hope you learned a little bit about it today, the Su-24 and its variants. Please, if you enjoyed today's video, leave me a like, and if you want to be notified of upcoming videos of military equipment in the future, hit the little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified in the future. Thank you to every single one of you who has been supporting me on Patreon. I cannot thank you enough. It really does mean a lot to me. It's helping me produce a lot of content and you know provide a lot better resources for me to produce content. Um, so thank you so much for that. I'm also on Discord, Facebook, and all sorts of fancy other links that you can check out in the description box below. I'd encourage you to check them out. And thank you again for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.